If you've been watching the show, then you've probably figured out by now that I love the Amiga. I do, I love the Amiga. I grew up playing games on the Amiga, games that felt like really bad Chinese bootlegs of the games that my friends were playing on their Super Nintendos and Sega Mega Drives. You'll also know that I love point-and-click adventure games, a genre that's never really had that much success on consoles. The genre's always struggled away from the personal computer, even on systems like the Wii that you'd think would be a natural fit, and it's not difficult to figure out why, even ignoring the terrible console ports of Maniac Mansion and The Secret of Monkey Island. Suffice to say, PC gamers tend to be a little savvier than their console brethren, who are more content shooting faces and jumping on heads than they are on solving lateral thinking puzzles and pixel hunting for hidden items. Now that may sound like a gross generalisation, like I'm saying that console gamers are on balance stupider than PC gamers. <clears throat> I won't bore you with the details of my emotional attachment to adventure games, you can go back and watch the LucasArts Adventure Games special if you're so inclined, but I will talk about a game I used to play often as a child and that I'd forgotten about entirely until relatively recently. A game called Candle Cove, which sees you playing the role of a young girl in a world of bizarrely contorted pirates living aboard a ship called the Laughing Stock. I was absolutely hooked on this game as a kid, and recently decided to see if it had any interesting ports, something which proved difficult, as it's not listed on any of my usual sources like Lemon Amiga or The Hall of Light. All I could find was discussions on internet forums, and it was here that I learned that the game is actually a licensed title based off of an old kids TV show broadcast in some parts of America during the 1970s. Now, the show never made it across the pond, which explains why I never saw it between reruns of Bagpuss and Postman Pat as a child, and there's no footage of the show on YouTube, which is weird, but then I also couldn't find footage of the game either. All of this adds up to the fact that I've never seen the TV show that this game is based on. I have no context for any of the characters that appear or any of the events that take place in the game. The story is... well, it, it's there, I'm, I'm sure it's there, but I'll be buggered if I have any clue about what's actually going on. The narrative dissonance doesn't do the puzzles any favour either. They lack the flair, care and thought that went into making LucasArts titles. In fact, some of the puzzles have downright ridiculous solutions, as though someone pinned a list of random objects to the wall and threw darts at them to decide which ones worked together. But despite these flaws, I was mesmerised by this game, which is odd because for a kid's game, it's a scary, often terrifying experience, featuring cutscenes that, like a cookery show on YouTube or a board game review series, feel like a form of psychological torture seeming to drag on for hours and hours and hours. Take for instance this sequence as you approach the cave, or your first encounter with the Skin Taker, an encounter that will stay with you for years. Ugh. Of course, this isn't the first kids game to unintentionally give me the heebie-jeebies, as the music and visuals of The Seven Gates of Jambala left me feeling very unsettled as a child, but Candle Cove takes that to extremes. It's hard to imagine anybody could have made this game with kids in mind, looked at the finished product and thought, yep, the young'uns will love this, but apparently that's what happened. It's an endless howling torment of the soul. You know, for kids. But I don't talk about games on this show unless they have some interesting ports, and obviously Candle Cove fits that category. Well, either that or I'm being needlessly nostalgic and self-indulgent, but when have I ever done that? Now, best as I can tell, the game was originally put out for the Commodore 64, although I'm unable to pinpoint exactly when the game was released, as like the Amiga version, it's not listed on any game databases. The game makes surprisingly good use of the Commodore 64's limited hardware, and characters and locations are recognisable and stand out well. Even with these blocky graphics and simple colours, it still looks grim, like a nightmare in LEGO. Another port was released for the PC, again, not sure of the year, but if I had to guess, I'd say it was around 92 or 93. This version features inferior MIDI audio, which lends the game a hollow quality, like the music is playing from the next room or the bottom of a well or something, which doesn't help the game's unintentionally terrifying demeanour. The graphics quality has also received a bump up to 256 colour VGA, giving the skin taker, seen here ruining every night's sleep you'll ever have for the rest of your life, an even more visceral sheen. 
I look at this game now and I wonder why I spent so much time playing it as a kid. In fact, there's another adventure game that I remember playing as a kid called Dark Sea, which is based on the artwork of H.R. Geiger and is obviously supposed to be a horror game. And there's this one sequence in Dark Seed where you return to your house to find a basket on your doorstep. And when you examine the basket, there's a baby inside. And the baby dissolves, melts away into this weird alien creature. And that moment in the game freaked me out so much that I uninstalled the game from the hard drive and formatted all seven of the game's floppy disks. And yet Candle Cove, I kept coming back to it. Why, why did I do that? What the hell was wrong with me as a child? The game is wretched across all three systems, and it's hard to believe that the game was even released in the first place, let alone ported to two more systems years after the fact. In one case, a full decade after the original game was presumably released. But people must have been playing it, right? It must have been popular for it to have been ported to two more systems years after the fact. So why is no one talking about this game? Why does no one discuss it? I don't, I can't understand why I'm the only one talking about this game now. I don't, maybe it's just because it's terrible, I don't know. But you think a, a Wikipedia article or something, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stew on that for a while. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna go away and uh, play Candle Cove, actually. I'm gonna do that for a while and I'll see you guys next week.